Hello, this is in response to Divine Rhymes, response to uh, Richard Dawkins' What If You're Wrong video, which is just a clip of a longer video that I actually got off of his site. So you can download that if you want to check it out, and it's on YouTube. Uh, first of all, my nickname, it's I Don't Know. Basically, when I was 16 years old, I was talking with my friend on the phone and asked what would be a good handle name to use, and I basically got the response, I don't know. <laughs> so I actually used that as a handle name. Nothing serious there, just for lack of anything better, that's the, ni that's the nickname I'm using. Okay, the first criticism of, of the video is that Dawkins didn't really answer the question and tried to humiliate the person. This is actually a common criticism to this video from Christians. Um, to a certain extent, it's accurate, and certainly I'm sure she was humiliated by the whole thing, but it, the criticism that he didn't answer the question is sort of missing the point of the manner in which he chose to answer it. Uh, basically, basically, the question itself was flawed, and that, that was the point that Dawkins was trying to make. It's not a direct answer, but it's pointing out a false dichotomy in the question itself. Basically, that false dichotomy, at least an implied false dichotomy here, is that, uh, is that there are two options. Either you are a Christian, or you are a non-believer. And those are the two possible scenarios there. <coughs> when the fact remains that there are all manner of, of believers who are not Christians. You've got Muslims, you've got Buddhists, you've got Jains, you've got Hindus, you've got all sorts of animism, uh, varieties of animism. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what kind of answer uh, Divine Ryan would like Dawkins to have given. I, I assume the, the answer he really wanted was, well, if I'm wrong, I'm going to hell. Well, <laughs> tough. There are, there are a lot of other possibilities there, pal. Um, there's the possibility that, uh, that by not following Buddhism, you're extending the number of cycles of, of uh, death and rebirth, and therefore lengthening the amount of time you have to suffer. That's not a good thing, is it? Uh, or, let's see, if, if Shinto's are wrong, uh, basically, uh, your prospect after death is becoming a kami. So, I don't know, you, if, if you're a valuable fig, if you're a valuable figure in Shinto, you might, you might become a rather valuable kami, and they might build what's called a tori, that's, those those gates that you see, the most famous one is in the southern part of Japan, and uh, well, they're kind of shaped like this. Uh, that one in the south of Japan is actually in the ocean, so it's very beautiful. Uh, let's see, and also there's the possibility of of the truth being simply something nobody's considered. Maybe you've got an atheist god. I mean, obviously, being a god, the the god himself wouldn't be atheistic. But maybe this whole universe is just a is just a scheme to see how how creatures would treat a universe that actually appears as if there is no god, which is how it appears to me and to other atheists. And in that case, if he's actually intended us to not believe in gods are in the supernatural, and if he and if he plans on punishing anybody, well, who's he going to punish? Hmm, something to think about there. Okay, uh, yeah, you said if we're wrong, we die like everyone else. Well, uh, I've already addressed this a little bit, so I'm sorry, but not if, not if the Muslims are right. Then, then you're in for some torment, too. And, uh, let's see. Not if the Buddhists are right. You're, I don't think you're following the Eightfold Path here, and so you're in for more suffering than if you'd followed it correctly. Let's see, another point that's made. A lot of people in India have converted. Well, George Harrison has converted to, or he's dead now, but George, George Harrison converted to Hinduism. Lots of people convert to Scientology and 
Raelianism and all kinds of things. Um, the fact remains that most people on this planet, the vast majority, have belief systems that don't vary substantially from those of their parents or those who reared them. I mean, they might convert to a different sect of whatever religion, but it, it, it's, it's quite rare. I would imagine, I would imagine fewer than 1% of people who abandon one one religious ugh, one religion <laughs> actually convert to another if you want to make a claim that conversions to a religion have any relevance at all to the truth value of that religion you got to you got to give a hand to Islam as as they've been smoking Christianity lately um Let's see here. Any, I have a whole list of notes, but I don't think I can get this into a 10-minute video, so I'm going to skip some things. But it's claimed that um, it. He talks a lot about Mr. Uh, the Vine Rhyme talks a lot about hell and the soul. This is the question I really want to pose most. All right, um, MRIs and CAT scans and uh, brain surgery, abnormal psychology, studying various different kinds of, uh, of aphasias and other kinds of mental disorders have pretty much ha have made a pretty strong case that our memories, our reasoning, our ability to reason, our language, our emotions, our ability to feel pain and so on are intricately tied to our brain and to our nervous system. So here's the question I want to ask, what is the soul? It, it, based on the scientific evidence, it would seem that the soul is not, or is not our memories, is not our ability to feel pain, not our emotions, and so on. So first of all, what is the soul? And secondly, if the, if the soul is not these things, then why why should I be concerned about whatever torment lies uh, lies in wait for me if, if your claims are correct? Basically, if if there's no pain or no emotional attachments or no no memory, why why should I care if I'm suffering? What does suffering even mean when when those things are absent? And also the thing about uh, the Vine Rhyme said that we cannot conceive of God and the fact that there is a concept of God therefore points to his existence. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Nearly, nearly all theists that I've ever heard, and certainly those theists that, that claim the truth of a, of a certain set of doctrines, theists and pantheists, uh, they might have a case there, but in the case in in the case of Christianity, there are a lot of claims made about God. In in the case of Islam, in the case of Judaism, in the case of Hinduism, a lot of these religions make very clear claims about God, and they very much seem to point to God as an anthropomorphic entity. Uh, nearly all Christians refer to God as having created humans in His own image and likeness. What does that mean? And cr human traits are constantly ascribed to God, both in the Bible and elsewhere, from preachers and so on. God has jealousy and love and anger and anguish at man's fall and his subsequent many shortcomings. So, to me it seems like, at least based on the Christian picture of God, saying we can't conceive of God and therefore he exists makes about as much sense as saying we can't conceive of Dracula and therefore he exists. As for the evolution stuff, um, I don't really even want to respond to these. I'm running out of time on the video. I might be over 10 minutes anyway. I really, I, I don't mean to be rude here, but you really seem to be ignorant on the subject. And I saw your other video about the monkeys and the, and the other primate skulls. By the way, humans are primates. Uh, I saw that video and I'm, I gotta tell you, I'm not impressed. I really think you need to research 
evolution more, research Darwinism more, and not just from creationist sources. Anyway, uh, that's about all I have to say. Um, I hope you learned something, and I hope you have some impetus to research certainly evolution more thoroughly, and I hope you never use Pascal's wager again, because it's a terrible argument, frankly. It, you, it, it doesn't demand a, a real answer, because the question itself is flawed. The wager itself is flawed. Anyway, thank you. Uh, see you.